Hello and welcome to July 21st and your weekly installment of the Go No Go Show. Thanks so much for tuning in uh, on Stock Charts TV. And uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, make sure to uh, subscribe to the Stock Charts channel. Also, you can check out Go No Go Charts uh, right here on YouTube. Alex Cole, my friend, great to see you again. Uh, lots going on in the markets. Uh, a little bit of constructive evidence from a trend perspective. Uh, so how about we dive right into the charts with a cross-asset go-no-go heat map, uh, just to take a look from the top-down perspective at the asset classes and uh, the nature of these markets. Absolutely. This could be the start of something beautiful, right? Uh, we're seeing some change, uh, some constructive movements to go trends, potentially a more risk-on environment. The top panel here is the equity markets painting blue bars now. Um, <clears throat> Let me just change that to the S&P really quickly. Sorry about that. But we get that oh, first yeah. go bar on the S&P. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got treasury bond prices making a go. And we've got the dollar still trying to hold on to a go trend. Mm -hmm. But we'll look at these charts in a bit more detail to see what's actually happening. Absolutely. So from a from a top down perspective, we're seeing uh, that that inverse move for yields uh, as, as there is some bond buying, uh, bringing the yields down. We know that's uh, inversely correlated to risk assets like equities and cryptos. Alex, let's dive into the chart of the TNX just to uh, take a look at what's happening in U.S. Treasury yields. Some of the pressure coming off uh, in terms of uh, those rate spikes. What are you seeing from a trend perspective on this chart? We seem to be seeing some sort of stabilization, right? So we were looking at this chart in our uh, note that went out at the beginning of the week. We were just about here. We were spotting a some amber bars, some no-go bars. We were talking about the oscillator being at the zero line. And we're sort of still where we were on Monday. Uh, mm -hmm. We're still fluctuating between amber go fish bars and no-go bars. And the oscillator is still testing the zero line from below. So there's some indecision here, uh, definitely some some consolidation, definitely some stabilization, um, a little bit directionless at the moment. Absolutely. But we're not seeing Treasury yields climbing to new highs right now, meaning that uh, the pressure on uh, risk assets in that uh, rising rate environment uh, has taken a pause. And yeah. uh, we're certainly watching uh, the chart of the TNX to understand uh, what's coming next uh, in terms of the macro environment and some of those intermarket relationships. So mm. a little period of indecision, but right now, weight of the evidence is a no-go on yields. Uh, and so let's take a look at the S&P 500 and see how uh, markets are reacting to this, this pause in the accelerating higher rates. Look well, at that. It <laughs> there it is. We've got the first go bar appear today after two amber bars. Um, the oscillator has been sort of trying to give us a hint this might happen. It's been riding the zero line for some time tried to break into positive territory, broke into positive territory a couple of days ago, and now following through with uh, a go bar. Now, um, today's note actually that went out, we were showing that we actually would consider this a break out of a ascending triangle. Mm -hmm. um, so if we look at this level here, this go bar breaks the upper resistance of an ascending triangle. You can see these higher lows see the oscillator getting back to zero and now above. And you can see that go bar corresponding with a break above the resistance from this pattern. And we find that, uh, you know, often anecdotally that the trend color happens on breaks of significant levels. So that's interesting to see as well. We were talking about how an initial target could be right around here where we see these prior highs. So positive signs today on the S&P on a daily chart. Absolutely. Alex, if you don't mind, uh, pop that out to a weekly basis. If, sure. if, we, uh, if we were to just consider the primary trend of U.S. equity markets, uh, we're seeing some constructive uh, movements in price on the daily basis. Uh, mm -hmm. And here we can see this week's performance in that final bar of the, uh, of the weekly chart here in a week no-go. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, price gains, uh, but the overall trend conditions from that longer term perspective uh, still to the downside. So yeah. uh, for everybody who's watching, right, we've been talking for weeks about uh, bear market rallies or relief rallies being very seductive. Uh, and so we are waiting for some evidence, uh, obviously not trying to uh, preordain where the markets are headed, but re react responsibly to uh, what the market is telling us. So on a daily basis, we're seeing the evidence for a trend change. Uh, and obviously that will need to continue in order to see this weekly bar uh, make a trend change as well.
And I think that needs to be the final note, right? That the daily, what we're seeing on the daily is within the context of a larger no-go trend. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep that in mind. You'd have to be careful with your risk management. You'd fairly clear where your risk parameters or where your, your stops could be, mm -hmm. uh, but in the context of a larger no-go trend. And we'll see where it goes from here. Absolutely. Well, let's get under the hood of the U.S. equity markets, taking a look at our go no go sector rel map. Uh, and for those of you who are new to the show, what we're reviewing here is the relative strength of each sector of the S&P 500 against the benchmark index. Uh, we track all 11 sectors on a relative strength basis to understand where leadership is coming from. Uh, and it certainly looks like the, uh, the nature of these markets are in a period of rotation again. Uh, yep. Walk us through the uh, walk us through the panels in this sector rel map. Yep. So the the same story being told here by the relative map um, with using the sectors. We're seeing some more risk on activity. These top panels, remember, are our growth sectors: technology in the top panel, discretionary in the second, communications lagging a little bit in the third panel. Then in the middle, we've got our sort of cyclical value sectors. We've got energy, financials, industrials, materials. They've been struggling for a while now. But the leaders, the outperformers of late have been those really defensive sectors, healthcare, staples, utilities. And you can see that as the growth sectors come into favor, the defensive sectors uh, beginning to roll over a little bit. So, yes, a rotation towards risk and appetite for risk on the relative maps on a daily basis. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to dive into the financials and the energy sector uh, here in just a minute. Uh, but let's let's switch our view right now, Alex, to a chart of the, the U.S. oil fund uh, yeah. just to see what's been happening in the energy markets. Obviously, the XLE being a strong outperformer so far in 2022. Uh, the oil trade has, has worked well in the first half of the year, but we've seen that fall out of trend. Uh, and so what are you seeing in the chart of oil right now? Right. So we know that trends persist, right? That's one of the most sort of enduring aspects of, of financial markets that allow people to have outsized returns. So we're seeing this no go now in oil, having been one of the strongest performers for the year to date, the no go has taken hold and we see a no go trend in oil. So given that all else being equal, we could expect this trend to continue unless we see enough evidence to tell us otherwise. And right now we're seeing the oscillator ride the zero line where we would expect it to find resistance. So if it, if it finds resistance here, rolls over, we'll look for a new leg down in price um, and the trend in oil to the downside to continue. Of course, if that doesn't happen, oscillator goes into positive territory, that would be a threat to the no-go. But given that we are in a no-go trend, we're looking now at the oscillator to see if it finds resistance here at zero and whether we can then participate or find some opportunities uh, in this no-go trend in oil. Absolutely. And just a, a quick review for those of you who are new to us in that lower panel, uh, we've got a lot of information embedded in a single indicator, the go-no-go -no -go oscillator. Uh, first and foremost, when we change from the green to the dark blue, that, that gives us an indication of heavier relative volume. So as uh, oil peaked and we started moving to the downside, you see that uh, volume uh, became much heavier right where Alex's cursor is. And we know that uh, in the principle of polarity, what was support, so through the go trend uh, in the first half of the year, we kept finding support at the zero line, uh, return to positive momentum for the, uh, for the bulk of that move. And now we find ourselves in the no-go trend and we've got negative momentum persisting. Each time we come back to retest that zero line, uh, momentum is rejected back in the direction of the no-go trend, we're seeing uh, selling enthusiasm. And what we're, what we're faced with right now on the far right side of the chart is a sustained neutral zero level in momentum, which tells us that there's, there's a bit of a tug of war between buyers and sellers. That grid of the go-no-go no go squeeze is beginning to build. And so we're looking at uh, you know weight of the evidence being in the no-go trend conditions, but also know that uh, a break of a squeeze uh, can lead to high velocity moves in the direction of the break. And so, it's interesting to see the classical technical analysis at play here. You mentioned it briefly, but um, as this trend develops, you see heavy volume on the moves down. Even, even in this little period here, when we see lower lows and lower highs, you see the volume increase as price moves down mm -hmm. and then lessen on the rally. So, you know, there's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot going on. But if you're thinking of lower volume on rallies in a no-go, 
the weight of the evidence still a no-go we should we're still expecting the zero line to provide resistance until we see otherwise absolutely let's take a look at a single stock within uh, within the energy complex let's take a look at valero vlo being the ticker symbol uh, as we're seeing the the strengthening no-go conditions on an individual basis uh, yeah. individual equity um what's what's telling to you on this chart alex well, so this comes out of that idea. If, if we are in a no-go and we're testing resistance and we are likely to find resurging momentum in the downside, then let's look for an opportunity within the oil industry. And this is Valero. Valero has been a very good performer for us in the go side for much of the year. Now we see the no-go trend in place and we are seeing resistance at the zero line. Now, interestingly for Valero today, we have price action driving the oscillator back into negative territory after spending a couple of bars at the zero line. And we're getting that no-go trend continuation icon here, suggesting that we may move, continue to move lower and test these lows. Absolutely. So there's your story in the uh, in the energy space, uh, one of the great trades of 2022, uh, clearly trend reversal into the no-go. Let's let's switch our eye to the financial sector. Uh, we, we were looking at that sector rel map moments ago. Uh, if we take a chart of the XLF, uh, we're seeing some constructive evidence under the hood uh, on an absolute trend basis for financials. Alex, walk us through what you're seeing here. So not quite as uh, sunshiny as uh, what we saw on the S&P, but yes, some evidence to, to suggest that perhaps the no-go in financials coming to an end. Uh, the first amber bar for several months, oscillator quickly uh, moving into positive territory, uh, and we seem to be testing. This is a very, very strong level of support and resistance. You mm -hmm. mentioned the word polarity. Uh, we talk about it a lot, uh, but it was support here, support again here. And then once broken becomes resistance, resistance. And we'll see if this level can be broken this time, given that we see a little bit more trend condition changing to, to paint at least one amber go fish bar with the oscillator now clearly in positive territory. Absolutely. And so if we were to dive into the financial sector, uh, looking at an individual security, um, let's let's turn our eye to Bank of America uh, just to take a look at, uh, at how the individuals are performing. So Bank of America has been in a really strong no-go. And actually on Monday, we were talking about this as a possible continuation idea. Um, and so we were sort of here on Monday as the oscillator tested the zero line and as this price bar brought price up to resistance levels that we see here across the chart. Now, we wouldn't have therefore uh, done anything with that because we didn't get the resistance we were looking for at the zero line. In fact, on heavy volume, we've broken into positive territory and the trend continues to weaken on these pink bars. So although the no-go weight of the evidence for Bank of America is still a no-go, given the sector is painting an amber bar, we're in positive territory. Uh, we'll be looking at this carefully and not rushing into that no-go, given we didn't find the trend continuation uh, that perhaps we were looking for on Monday. So we'll we'll still see what happens here. But the weight of the evidence suggests still a no-go in, in Bank of America. Absolutely. So as we've been talking about uh, for weeks now, the, the bear market rallies or relief rallies uh, can be very seductive, uh, but they're often short-lived. And so, Alex, let's let's look at a weekly chart again of the XLF. If we back out to a longer time frame, uh, we can we can see that the primary trend on a weekly basis mm -hmm. is still in that no go. Um, yeah. What sort of constructive evidence would you want to see on the longer time frame uh, to take a position or, or see that there's even uh, uh, more bullish activity happening yeah. in the U.S. financial sector? Well, it's very simple in terms of in terms of the process. One oscillator needs to break above zero. Two trend conditions need to change enough to paint a go bar. Mm -hmm. uh, and until that happens, then we are still in a longer term no go, just like we are on the S&P as well, remember. So mm -hmm. we've got to make sure we're aware that any moves we make on the daily basis are in the context of a larger no go trend. So you can see how as on a weekly basis, this trend moves higher, we find support at zero. When that support does not hold, then we struggle and we become a no go. And now we're finding resistance at that level. Now, this is um, it's something that we talk about a lot with clients and over the years is that when you are going against the larger time frame, that's OK. You certainly don't want to put on a, a long trade when the smaller time frame is a, a no go. But for example, the daily chart right now 
on the S&P and on the XLF is more positive. So if you wanted to put on a long trade, fine, but you need to be tight with risk management because you need to be aware that you're doing so in the context of a larger no-go trend. And until we see this break above zero and then the trend change in the weekly, uh, that is still the case. Absolutely. So the last several weeks and through the month of June, we've we've talked about the outperformance of very defensive sectors like utilities and consumer staples. Uh, just to, to kind of round out that analysis, when we see the rotation back into uh, some more risk on uh, growth equity sectors of the market, let's let's check in on Johnson and Johnson, uh, one of our one of our favorite names to take a look at uh, in the consumer staples area uh, on the weekly basis. What yeah. we're looking at right now. Uh, we're, we're seeing it just holding trend, although uh, uh, it, my eye is drawn to the gonna go oscillator breaking to the downside. Absolutely. You've uh, you've been looking at these charts a long time now, Tyler, <laughs> uh, and it pops out. Right. So you can see just by looking at the chart, though, that this is a chart of outperformance relative to the S&P for the mm -hmm. last couple of months. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, for the last six months or so, really, we know that the S&P has struggled. And you can see that we've actually been making higher highs and higher lows, and mostly we've been in a go trend. Mm -hmm. So that's where that outperformance and that leadership was that we saw on the REL map throughout the year in the defensive sectors. Uh, we are holding on to this go trend, like you said, weakening to aqua bars, and we were looking at the zero line this week to mm -hmm. see if it will hold again. Now, if this rotation continues away from the defensive sectors into more risky assets, then we may well see this not um, bounce back to the zero line and into positive territory, but fall lower. And that could be uh, the signs that something more destructive is happening in a defensive security such as Johnson & Johnson. Absolutely. So as you just referenced, right, we're looking at the absolute trend of Johnson & Johnson. Uh, can you throw this into a ratio chart? So just add uh, in the denominator SPY. And let's let's see what Johnson and Johnson uh, is looking like on a relative basis uh, to the overall market. And so here, here, I mean, this is as clear a picture as you could uh, you could ask for in terms of understanding the rotation that we've seen in the markets over the last year and a half. Right, defensive sector, defensive stock struggling throughout 2021, breaking into a go trend. Remember, on a weekly basis, after. Mm -hmm. The leading indication coming from the oscillator breaking above zero and staying above zero. And then def defense been on the field now for much of 2022. Mm -hmm. And you can see that go trend in Johnson & Johnson relative to the S&P. But even here in this relative strength ratio chart, we see the importance of this moment. We're seeing rotation into growth securities and we're mm -hmm. seeing rotation potentially away from defensive sectors and securities. And we are at zero on this ratio. Uh, mm -hmm. So a very important inflection point where we've got the price coming down to test support here, and mm -hmm. we've got the oscillator um, becoming very, very important. Will it be support? In which case on a long-term trend, mm -hmm. this, wrote, this still will hold as defense being outperforming. But if it doesn't, then uh, perhaps this rotation away from defense into risky assets will be more long-term. Absolutely. Uh, so, Alex, speaking of risky assets, uh, one more piece of constructive evidence to share with uh, with our viewers here. Uh, at the end of this week, we are seeing some constructive evidence in Bitcoin, of all places, uh, where we are uh, Whoops, oh, looking, looking my... for that fresh go trend. That was a fat finger. Don't worry. That's, uh, all good. There we go. All good. So, yeah. So here we are. Uh, people have been waiting for it. Um, and here it is. So if you pull this chart back a little bit, um, here's the first go bars on the world's largest crypto currency uh, for several months. Um, and from a this is, you know, again, we're both really strong believers in the fundamentals of technical analysis, the traditional tools and techniques that people have used. And for me, if you can see the crosshairs of my uh, my track mouse here, that seems to be a level now which, according to the concept of polarity, could become support for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you can see that on the chart because it's not overwhelmed with a bunch of indicators. And so not only are we we've moved through the amber bars into go bars as the oscillator has broken above zero and found support and on heavy volume, 
Mm-hmm. Just from a traditional technical technique perspective, we seem to have broken above levels that were resistance during this basing consolidation period and mm-hmm. therefore now could become support. So that's pretty constructive evidence that, you know, perhaps this is the beginning of a new go trend. Absolutely. Being able to see those ascending triangles and, and notice the breakout. Uh, we've talked to a lot of analysts as well this week just about uh, finding support and holding those 2017 highs. Uh, for those of you who remember going to Thanksgiving dinner uh, <laughs> five years ago and hearing from your you know, grandma uh, that she wanted to know about her allocation to cryptocurrencies. Yep. Uh, we saw that parabolic move higher uh, and then, of course, uh, crack in, uh, in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, big drawdowns into the uh, what the kids call a crypto winter. Uh, but here, just from a price dynamics perspective, uh, we're seeing uh, resource allocation, right? Uh, fund managers are piling in uh, to Bitcoin, so yep. which, is, which is indicative of uh, more risk on behavior in the marketplace. Right. Uh, so for all of those uh, registered investment advisors, all of our clients who are uh, helping manage wealth for clients, Uh, A big part of their role is uh, tactical asset allocation. So as we just talked, the defensive sectors coming to perhaps a conclusion of their period of outperformance, uh, seeing some new leadership uh, in in places like the the growth equity sectors, technology, communications, and discretionary, uh, as well as uh, the the moves in the financial sector. So a lot to be watching uh, in the markets these days. Uh, But Alex, I really appreciate you taking time to walk through these charts with us today. And for those of you who uh, who caught uh, uh, the Go No Go show every Thursday, make sure you download the StockChartsTV.com app. You can take this show and many others with you uh, wherever you uh, wherever you roam. As as we always say, be well, stay safe, and we'll see you next week Thursday at three thirty. Take care. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.